Hashimoto's patients need to watch out for more autoimmune conditions. Believe it or not, Hashimoto's patients, if Hashimoto's wasn't bad enough, they're at risk for several other autoimmune conditions. Today, we're gonna to be talking about rheumatoid arthritis. Now, that is an autoimmune condition that attacks your joint and your cartilage. So, if you have Hashimoto's and you have any of the symptoms I'm gonna talk about today, I think you're gonna find this video very helpful because I'm gonna teach you how to be proactive, not reactive. So, let's get into it. Hashimoto's, of course, is an autoimmune thyroid condition. It's the most common cause of hypothyroidism. It's the most common organ-specific autoimmune condition, and people with Hashimoto's are at risk for other, several other autoimmune conditions, and one of them is rheumatoid arthritis. Now, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune attack on your connective tissue, primarily the cartilage and the synovium of your joints, the little capsules in your joints. And the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis are, you know, fairly, and the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis are swollen, painful joints. But here's the problem. A lot of people with rheumatoid arthritis have swollen, painful joints, but they don't get diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis for several years. Why? Because when it comes to autoimmune conditions, the way most rheumatology works is there's kind of stages. There's preclinical, there's subclinical, and then there's overt clinical. And what the difference is, in preclinical, you have tissue antibodies that would be associated with that condition, uh, but they don't think you have enough symptoms or tissue damage for it. With subclinical, you've got the antibodies now and maybe a little more damage, but still not enough to be classified as rheumatoid arthritis and to get the treatment, whatever that might be. And then finally, there's overt clinical disease. Well, oh yeah, your joints are damaged, they're deformed, now we're gonna treat you. So that's a little bit of a problem I have with that sort of uh, logic and mindset. But that being said, if you've got Hashimoto's and painful swollen joints, I think it's time to get checked. So what test would you do to find out if you've got rheumatoid arthritis? Well, there's a couple different ways to do that. One is you can get a rheumatoid factor test. You can get what's called anti-CCP antibodies, which is a pretty good test for rheumatoid. But you can also get collagen antibodies. There's some other antibodies that do show up in RA that aren't your kind of classic rheumatology antibodies. Uh, some people, if you go to a rheumatologist, they're gonna give you an anti-nuclear antibody test, right? And if that's positive, then they'll do some other testing. There's a lot of different ways to get tested, but the point is, if you've got Hashimoto's and you have painful swollen joints, sometimes you can get fevers that don't make sense, it is time to get checked out by someone who knows what to test for. Now, if you go to the rheumatologist, they may not do some of the tests that I talked about or some of the tests that I'm gonna talk about, but it's a place to start. And you gotta remember that sometimes these antibodies can be there years before you meet the checkbox criteria for rheumatoid arthritis. And if that's the case, if you've got these antibodies, it's time to take action because there are things you can do to stave off or to prevent the progression or sometimes even reverse some of the damage that's happened. The problem is a lot of well-meaning rheumatologists don't do any of that. That's just not what they do. And so all they have is a hammer and you're a nail. So, you know, that's what they do. They say, well, come back and when you're worse or bad enough, that's when we'll do the steroids or we'll do the hydroxychloroquine or whatever it is. But you don't have to go that path, especially if you're proactive now. So what symptoms do you get with rheumatoid arthritis? The classic symptoms are painful swollen joints and it can get so bad that you start to get deformities of the joints. And by that time, you're over here in the clinical disease section. I want us to catch this way before that so we have a better chance of uh, you know, stopping it and perhaps even reversing it. The tests you do are those different antibody tests I talked about, and then it comes to treatment. Now again, I told you I kinda had a little bit of a problem with how standard rheumatology approaches this, and, you know, and I do because there are dietary things you can do. Absolutely, I've seen it in my practice many times. There's literature that supports it. The problem is most rheumatologists aren't gonna tell you about that for a variety of reasons. I don't mean they're trying to make you sick, but the other thing you can do is you can look beneath the hood of your antibodies and find out what's going on with your immune system for real, right? What is your phenotype? What's going on with the T cells and B cells? Because you have an immune system fingerprint that's basically just as unique as your actual fingerprint. Like, you and I, we have eyes and ears and fingers, but we each have our own fingerprint, right? Immune system's very similar. Yes, there's lots of people with rheumatoid arthritis, but if you look underneath the hood, there are differences in the T cells and B cells, and it's very important to know as a treating doctor, what is it? Because you treat different scenarios differently, right? So like with this lymphocyte map test, I like to do it's lymphocyte immunophenotyping. You can see if you look at this that some of these things are in the high column, right? 
Well, the thing about that is, is the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis can't predict that's what that's going to look like. And the symptoms can't predict that that's what's going to look like. But this is super important for treating them correctly. Because you treat that scenario differently than you would if there were a different arrangement, like if they were in the low calm. It's very important to find out what your phenotype is so that you can kind of tailor the treatment. Now, the other thing I also do is I also do multiple tissue antibody testing. Why? Because look, if you've got Hashimoto's, you are at risk for other autoimmune conditions, right? Uh, a lot of which I talk about uh, here on this channel, like celiac and rheumatoid and lupus and Sjogren's. And you can test for those antibodies right now. You can test for them and find out, is your immune system targeting them? And the other thing that a multiple tissue antibody test will let you do, it lets you uh, kind of refine what foods you might ought to be avoiding based on their cross reaction. I don't do IgG food sensitivity testing because it's a, it's a waste of time for a variety of reasons. But avoiding foods that are cross reactive because you know what tissue antibodies you have, that's very, very helpful, very, very important. So what should you do? If you have Hashimoto's, I don't care if your TSH is normal, I don't care if you're taking thyroid medication. If you've got painful swollen joints, it is time to get checked to see if you have rheumatoid arthritis, among other things. So you make sure you're working with someone that's going to take you seriously, do the right tests, know how to interpret them, and know what to do as far as treatment. And there's a lot you can do to regulate the immune system. You just got to work with someone who knows what to do. So be proactive, not reactive. I hope you guys found that helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.